Endowments can be for anybody. You are the person who is in charge of the endowment. You are the one who gets to decide. Uh, you you are the one who gets to decide who uses the endowment. So, for example, you can say that uh, when I die, this garden shall be used for the orphans of this particular madrasa. Or you can say it will be used for the fuqara of this city. Or you can say it will be used for my family members who are poor. You, as the person who chooses the endowment, has the right to put all the conditions that you want on it. And it can be as specific or as general as you want. Historically speaking, the reason why scholarship and masjids flourished in Islam was not because of the state, it was because of the endowments. Historically speaking, uh, the reason why scholarship was independent, one of the biggest problems that has taken place is that in the last 150 years, after the advent of colonialism, the awqaf was acquired by the governments. And what the used to be independent became dependent upon the government. Simple example of Azhar, for example, not to be controversial, but less than 100 years ago was when Azhar was acquired by the government. And there was a huge... Rebellion by the ulama of Azhar. They didn't want to be acquired. Because once you're acquired, you're in big trouble. You are salaried employees. You cannot speak your mind. You have influence. So on and so forth. Our ulama, how did our ulama used to live once upon a time? Who would take care of them? That's the beauty of the classical system. It was independent. Once you are associated with the madrasa, with the masjid, so people will leave endowments for the madrasa. And they will say, when I die, this building will be rented out and the profits will go to the running of the madrasa. So the madrasa board is getting money from different sources and they don't have to respond to a politician, a sultan, an amir. They are independent. And so ulama flourished because of this. The salaries of the khatibs and imams was not the government, was not the khulafa. Unfortunately, this is the modern reality of most countries in the Arab and Muslim world, correct? So when the government is paying your salary, guess what? Your khutbah is influenced by your salary. It's human nature, right? And this is one of the biggest problems that has happened that you and the fact of the matter is we also have the same issue here in North America where a lot of times the masjid board will control what the imam says right where the imam cannot be independent alhamdulillah i am independent don't worry alhamdulillah that was my one of my first conditions alhamdulillah and alhamdulillah this is the reality as well alhamdulillah as you all know and this is bifadlillah ta'ala upon allah's blessings on all of us alhamdulillah that uh, in this community alhamdulillah we are very very blessed but the fact of the matter is Let's be real here. How common is it that the imam says something that is too strict for the community? The board doesn't like it. And then the, he gets fired. Because why? Because the board did not like what the imam said. So what's going to happen? The imams learn, keep quiet, and preach the version of Islam that the board wants. What type of benefit will come from the ummah in this matter? So this is one of the biggest benefits of the Awqaf system. This was the benefit of the Awqaf system that caused our Ummah to flourish. And one of the causes of decline of the Ulama was the destruction of the Awqaf. And the acquirement of the governments of what the Awqaf used to do. Even in the Khilafah, building masjids and madrasas and the salaries of the religious clergy was not under the Khalifa. And this is of the biggest blessings of Allah upon the Ummah. Because you don't want it linked together. Anyway, I went into a long tangent, but that was to answer your question, we need to revive this concept. And again, there's actually books written on this. The concept of an endowment is Islamic. The Western world did not know what an endowment is. It did not know what an endowment is. It is an Islamic concept that was then acquired by the Western institutions, and then they built upon it, and they took it to a different level. But the, in reality, 
the first civilization to have something like an endowment where the asl or the structure remains and the profits benefit something else. And nobody can sell or buy or acquire the asl, whether it's a garden, whether it's a building, in our case, an amount of money which is in stocks, for example. That amount cannot be touched. This is new in human civilization. Nobody before these ahadith of Umar and others gave that principle. And that's why it's so important that we understand and thank Umar ibn Khattab for opening this door. فَيَا ذُلِّي وَيَا خَجَلِي إِذَا مَا قَالَ لِي رَبِّي أَمَا اسْتَحِيَيْتَهُ تَعْصِينِي وَلَا تَخْشَى مِنَ الْعَتَبِي وَتُخْفِي الذَّنْبَ عَنْ خَلْقِي وَتَأْبَى فِي الْهَوَى قُرْبِي فَتُبْ مِمَّا جَنَيْتَ عَسَى تَعُودُ إِلَى رِضَى الرَّبِّي تَعُودُ إِلَى رِضَى الرَّبِّي